Now, I'm almost afraid to read this next verse. I'm afraid you'll all say, this is heresy and we better get out of here. But look at verse 8. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stuck with the Bible. I have to give you what's in the Bible. You know, And I, I don't know what it is. I know this rubs, some people, this rubs them the wrong way, verse 8. And, and I've had people get mad. Usually it's preachers, other preachers, fellow preachers who get mad and say, well, you said this and this and this. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just reading it from the Bible. You know, What do you want me to do? And you didn't bring into it all these other things. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just reading, you know, I, it's just right in the text here. I'm just telling you what the text says. Verse 8, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Whoa, that's pretty strong, isn't it? But nevertheless, it's right there in your Bible. Blessed is, Now, who is this man that's so blessed? Who is this person that is so blessed the Lord will not impute? Well, that's the person to whom God counts righteousness, and it wasn't based on what they did. Wow, that's pretty good, isn't it? Well, as for me, I... I would say, uh, you've made your case, I'm sold, I'll, I'll take this kind of righteousness from Jesus. Uh, it's, it's accounted to us because of our faith in Christ. And he says, number one, your, your iniquities are forgiven. This is, these are the ramifications of it. Your sins are covered, and He will not impute sin to you. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Now we think He ought to, but He says He's not going to. <laughs> you know why? You know why He's not going to? Because He's already imputed your sins to somebody else. Impute means to lay to your charge or to put on your account. He, he really can't put them on your account because He's already put them on Jesus' account. And Jesus has already gone to the cross and paid for them. And He's already buried them in the tomb. And that was God's method of doing it. We can't get Him to undo that. He's already done it. I just say, let's just say amen to it and say this is a great, this is a great uh, redemption that we have. How come I'm the only one excited about this? Okay, go back to verse 1 again, Elliot. I'd like to read you these first uh, few verses from the message. I think the message is really good. I love the message translation. I'm so happy about it. Uh, let me start in the message translation. Verse 1. So, how do we fit what we know of Abraham, our first father in the faith, into this new way of looking at things? And by the way, this is a new way of looking at things 2,000 years old, and even still, it's a, it's a radical and a revolutionary way of looking at things. How do we fit what we know of Abraham into this new way of looking at things? Okay, If Abraham, by what he did for God, got God to approve him... And by the way, that's what most people think, that how it works. You do the right things and then God approves of you. The only problem with that is there's no Jesus in the picture. The only problem with that is you can't be good enough. Though you might be better than me, you can't be good enough to get the approval of a perfect God unless you're perfect. And if you're not perfect, then you need a perfect Savior. And I'm glad we have a perfect Savior. And we know what His name is. It's Jesus. If Abraham, by what he did for God, got God to approve him, he could have taken credit for it. That's, a, that's an interesting thought. If it, ba it was based on what we did, then we can take credit for it. And we can boast about it. But it's not based on us and what we did. The story we're given is a God story, not an Abraham story. In other words, it's all, it's all about Him and what He does. It's not about you and what you do. Okay, next verse. What we read in Scripture is this. Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. That was the turning point. This is so profound. This is worth thinking about. Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. And for him, that was the turning point in his life. He trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be right on his own. Now that doesn't mean, by the way, that having trusted God to be set right Instead of trying to be right on his own, that didn't. What it does mean is that we we live our lives in light of that, in in uh, in a compatible way with that. Okay, let's go on reading. If you're a hard worker and do a good job, you deserve your pay, but we don't call your wages a gift. Next verse. But if you see the job is too big for you, now let me just stop right there. I'm sorry for taking my time with this, but I want you to ponder these words. Think about your life. Now. I can think about my life. I can't think about your life, but you know your life. If you look at things in your life and you say, this is too big a job for me, instead of getting depressed about it, instead of feeling bad about it, just face up to it. It's too big for me. I need somebody with more uh, ability than I've got. I need somebody else on my case. And that's what he's saying about Abraham. If you see the job is too big for you, that it's something only God can do, and that's the way it is. We see that it's that we are powerless and can't do whatever it is we need done. And what specifically he's talking about is to be uh, in a right a right life that God accepts. It's too big for us. It's something only God can do, and you trust Him to do it because you could never do it yourself, no matter how hard or how long you worked. Now that little thought about working long and hard—that's where most Christians are. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to work longer. 
I'm going to work harder. I'm going to work longer. More work. And after a lifetime of that, it's kind of sad to think you can get to the end of your life after that kind of attitude and think, I still didn't do enough. That's a sad thought, isn't it? But you know, I've talked to people, literally. I have talked to people who that's what they say. I'm afraid I haven't done enough. Well, I'll, I'll, save, you the, I'll save you the effort. Say, yes, you're right. You haven't done enough. Uh, and I have, we can't do enough. There's not, how, <laughs> there's not enough that we can do. I mean, we can't do enough. Uh, it's, uh, uh, where was I? You could never do it yourself no matter how hard or how long you work. Well, well, that trusting Him to do it is what gets you set right by God, right with God by God. A sheer gift. How about that? It's pure gift of grace. Oh, so what do we do then about it? Well, we're supposed to receive it and believe in it and say, thank you very much. I'm grateful for that. I want to stand up and walk in the light of that and walk it in my life as a person who has received this kind of favor. Do you realize how, what extreme favor this is from God? What extreme grace, this, what extreme acceptance this is from God? Now, I would say this is in your Bible because Paul and God giving it to Paul through Jesus wants you to know it. He wants you to know it. He wants you to factor it into your thinking and know uh, every day in your life, 24 hours a day, God accepts you He's happy with you. He loves you. He's not taking into account your slips and your falls and, and, uh, and marking all those things down. He's already marked them down put them on Jesus. And He's there to help us and to be what we need Him to be in our lives. Okay, uh, that's good. Now let's go back to King James again now, Elliot. I want to skip down a little bit further in the chapter and get the ending. If we had time, we could go through every verse. And it's, all, it's worthwhile. It's worth doing it. But let's go down to um, verse 16. I want to take it up there. In the King James, first of all. And we'll come back to the message because it's so good. Verse 16 says, Therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace. In other words, this salvation and this relationship with God and this righteousness and, and everything, really everything that God has that we need, it's on our part, it's by faith. And he says, it is that way so that it might be by grace, so that it might be pure gift. To the end that the promise might be sure, that word sure means certain, to all the seed not only to them which is of the law, and not only to that which is of the law, but that also which is of faith, of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, uh, Paul says here that the promise, he wants it to be sure to all the seed. What does he mean by that? Well, as I said before, the Jewish nation, the nation of Israel, count themselves as the offspring of Abraham. And so they are, physically speaking. But did you know that Abraham had other offspring than just physical? Those who believe in Jesus are said to be the seed of Abraham, not by physical descent, but through faith. And so Abraham, by example, we might say, is the father, not just of the Jewish nation, but the father of all those who believe. So it says here, we are part of that, that seed as well. Uh, and he wants to make the promise sure to all the seed, uh, the, the offspring of Abraham. Not just those who are the nation of Israel, but the, also to that which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all. Now notice verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. And again, another quotation from the Old Testament, God speaking to Abraham. I have made you a father of many nations, before whom, or that is, uh, before God, whom he believed, he believed God, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things that be not as though they were, who against hope believed, in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Now this is an interesting thought because it says here God said to Abraham, first he was called Abram, and a little later in the story God changed his name to Abraham and he says, because I have made you the father of many nations. And again, Abraham believed him. Um, he says, I, God said to Abram, I have made you, notice this in verse 17, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Now, when God said that to Abram, he was still childless. When God said to Abram, Abram, let me tell you something. I have made you the father of many nations. You know what he could have done? He could have stopped and looked around and said, Is that so? Where are they then? <laughs> you know, see, God's word comes to us either directly, he could speak to you directly, or through the Bible. I mean, Listen, have you ever had the experience of reading the Bible and it's like words just jump off the page at you? I'd say that's as much God speaking to you. I mean, if you want to hear a loud voice like thunder, uh, maybe you can have that, but this is just as much God speaking to you. You should take what He has to say just as seriously. Here,